What's supper damnation? Rich with Let's Go Warriors back here with you again. Here's some looks at practice after Hawaii. So they took an off day on Sunday after the Saturday win against the Clippers, day off Sunday, and then Monday practice, Tuesday practice, Today is Wednesday. They're headed up to Sacramento. They didn't seem to have morning shoot around, which is odd, but maybe they just had a hard practice and wanted to get the rest. Obviously Wiggins practiced on Monday, but as you'll see in the interviews coming up, he is not going to play in Sacramento. And here's more of Wiggins. And of course, the chef, the goat, always have that cut to him. Next up, we have Steve Kerr talking about Jonathan Kaminga's role. So how do you view him differently maybe now as you're... Well, I have more confidence in, um, you know, in him and his ability to um, continue to grow and impact the game. And um, So, you know, the, the minutes are what they are. I mean, you know, Again, we, we, we look at everything during camp. We look at combinations. And, you know, we just signed three really good players with Kyle Anderson, Melton, and, and Buddy Hield. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try to win every game, whatever that means. And and um, if if guys separate themselves, you know, like um, say Steph did in year four um, of his career, then that's where you start seeing 35 minutes. But go back and look um took steph four years and that was after three years of college right so um you you know it, it there's nothing you know there's nothing guaranteed there's it's just you separate your, yourself from the group and you you make it impossible for the coach to not play you that's that's the only the only way to do it next up we have steve getting asked the requisite moses moody minutes question so let's take a look at that and then I'll comment on it. It's just, it's a numbers game. And so um, the only thing any of these guys can do is um, go out and have a great camp and make make it really hard on us as decision makers. And Moses having a great camp and um, he's, he's playing great. So all he can do is keep doing what he's doing. So I've just got to say that after that got posted, obviously on social media, everybody attacked Steve Kerr, said, you got to play Moody, you got to play Moody in uh, far negative terms. And I just put it. And the way I look at it is I wrote it in our website right here. If you click on the latest article about the Hawaii trip and Melton's defense, I talk a little bit about the depth chart. Moody is currently behind DeAnthony Melton on the depth chart. He should be. But the good news is that Melton provides a blueprint for Moses Moody. And I just feel like things will work itself out. Look at the Warriors salary cap table. You can see that DeAnthony Melton only has a one-year deal at almost 13 million. And if he plays well, then he'll get a better contract next year, probably for some other team. And the Warriors will probably have to decide between Melton and Moses Moody. Moody being I think four years younger or so than Melton makes him automatically the more likely candidate to get the extension and be chosen versus keeping Melton. The funny thing is the Warriors social media team happened to post something Moses Moody related right after that coverage from practice. Let's check that out. I don't know. I always feel like when we try to look at things in a positive light, it's like speaking to a bunch of zombies. They don't care. They want to play the role of the bully on the playground and make fun of Steve Kerr and throw him under the bus. I don't know. I just, I don't really have time for that. I just want the Warriors to play good defense, win games. And so far, Melton is slightly ahead of Moody. 
because he has the defensive element, but Modi certainly has the potential of becoming the next the Anthony Melton. And you never know, there might be injuries or whatnot. So we'll see, knock on wood, right? But anyways, let's continue with practice because we move on to Tuesday. <laughs> Would have been nice there if Blake Hinson had hit the three. But anyways, we move on. So obviously there, Kaminga and Melton working together on the same court. So now that's twice where I've noticed that JK has been working pretty much solo by himself, working on his game. And so I think he's been given the green light, the open door to walk through, to make some individual moves during games, but we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. Let's continue on. So over on this court, obviously it's uh, one versus one, one-on-ones, GP2, Wiggins, Kyle Anderson, Looney, and even Jerry Stackhouse. So let's just sit back and enjoy. Just another angle. You can see what the fair. And Dalton Johnson of NBC Sports Bay Area reported that GP2 did dominate on defense in the 1v1s. But we're going to see Wiggins get him just for one shot. Look at the stare down from GP2 that Jacob Rubin, the assistant coach who made the pass. I don't know if GP2 was complaining that Jacob didn't wait for him to get set on defense. Looks like he was set, but we'll just move on. You know, GP2 is always a fun guy to be around. So Kyle Anderson got Wiggins there, and now the great Jerry Stackhouse. I just typed it in for you guys. Jerry Stackhouse is nearly 50 years old, 49 years old out there doing 1v1s against actual Warriors players. Now let's move on with practice. Finally, Brandon Pajemsi got a little injured, but it wasn't serious during the scrimmages, according to Danny Emmerman of Bay Area News Group, who was on our live stream a couple days ago. And so here's Brandon getting some watch time, as Buddy Heald likes to say. And 
to, unfortunately, nobody surprised the people on Twitter in the replies to Dalton Johnson's video clip of that. They started throwing BP under the bus, said that he should have been traded, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that was, that was just kind of, kind of weird. Again, I, I hope people have better things to do. Next up, Andrew Wiggins. <clears throat> Feeling better, a lot better than before. Um, I'll, I'll give it a little bit before practice. Steve said, you know, he would be able to play tomorrow because obviously you have more practice than you. Do you have an expectation for Friday or Sunday or anything like that? Um, not exactly, not yet. You know, I'm just kind of leaning on the training, training staff and you know all of them to you know guide me through when they think I'm ready. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but. Andrew Wiggins, a little bit of the sniffles there at the end. Here's even more sniffles for you as he continues to give an update. Um, not really. You know, we still got some time before, you know, the regular season starts. And, you know, I'm back in practice now and going through everything. And, you know, we got a great coaching staff that, you know, are great teachers. And I'm just there trying to learn and, and you know, trying to figure stuff out. And But I was watching from the sidelines a lot in Hawaii. Um, so it wasn't like I was getting left behind or anything like that. Obviously, it's, it's easier when you're in the drills and, you know, in the mix doing it than rather than watching from the sidelines. But, you know, I've got a good view. And then finally, we've just talked about his 1v1 drills with the other guys. You and GP2, Moses, Loon, just kind of taking me through that little side session over there with, uh, with Jacob Rubin and Jerry Stackhouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're just, you know, getting our ones in. <clears throat> working on our game, you know, iron work is iron, and, you know, we're there to make each other better. And that does it for the practice report. Now, as far as all of the interviews, I hope to have those up later, but I'm already behind on other interviews too. So we'll see. And before I sign off, I want to give credit to all the beat writers that were there to get all of that footage that you just saw. There's Dalton Johnson of NBC Sports Bay Area, Whitley Sandretto of 95.7 The Game, Jason Dumas of Cron 4, Danny Emmerman of Bay Area News Group, and Sam Gordon of the SF Chronicle. And if I missed anybody else, apologize, I'll get you in next time. And then as far as the game tonight, be sure to join us on our live stream for the watch party per usual, and we'll see you there. So everybody, thank you for joining me today. We'll do the customary Justice One, Two, Three, and Brate right now. And Brate. <laughs>